With the newly launched Spring Boot 2.2 version with the Milestone version M1, Spring Boot has launched an option for us to control the lazy initialization using a configuration. There was a post written by Andy Wilkinson from the Spring team recently about this. Let's look at how we can use this particular configuration in order to make our startup time for Spring Boot application faster. And also we will see the downside of enabling this particular configuration. And also we will see what are the different ways you can have lazy initialization for a specific bean as a part of this particular video. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. As usual, I am in the Spring Initializer. So this is where we are going to create the new Spring Boot 2.2.0 M1 version, the Milestone 1 version. So I have the Maven project selected, the Java language as the default language. And I want to select 2.2.0 M1 instead of the 2.1.4, which is the stable version right now. So I'm going to use the group ID as com tech primers slash lazy. And I'll make the artifact name as spring boot lazy init example. Also, I want to change the package name. I want to change the package name to just com tech primers lazy. I'll retain the packaging as jar and the Java version as eight. Additionally, I'll also use the spring MVC um, to create a controller and to show you how a controller is loaded or when the controller is injected whether it is lazily initialized or uh, whether it is initialized during the startup time etc right and also uh, you will use the spring jpa and the h2 um, database the in-memory database just to show you uh, to load the spring boot application with additional dependencies right so let's create this project and open in intellij The project is now loaded into IntelliJ. Uh, let's go to the source and see the main class. Spring Boot Lazy Initialization example. So this is the main class which I have. Uh, I'll change my Java version to Java 8. So we have the project ready here. Uh, let me start up this particular project. So I'll trigger the main class so we can see how much time the Spring Boot application takes in order to load into a JVM. Initially it might take a while and also my laptop is a bit, bit old laptop so I'm not sure how much time it's going to take it's just having 4 GB of memory so it could be more but we'll create the benchmark based on that particular startup time. So right now, if you see the initialization of the spring application context completed in almost 10 seconds and the whole application came up in like what 20 seconds, right? So let me restart this or rerun this particular app so that it's faster because now it has cached some information, right? So from there, we will take on with the improvements and the lazy initialization part. So now the improvements have started, right? The initialization got completed in four milliseconds and the application came up in nine seconds, right? Now, what we can do is we can add some controllers and services to show whether the constructor got loaded or not during the initialization or whether it did a lazy initialization. So I'm going to create something called as lazy service. So this is a service, so I'll annotate it with service. Also, I'll create something called as lazy controller. So this is a risk controller which I want to create and I want to show. I'll create an endpoint called lazy. We'll create an endpoint with a get mapping and this is going to return string. Hello. I'll just say hello and here we need the service right so I'm going to auto wire the service the lazy service 
and I'll use the lazy service here. So I'll create a method called hello inside the lazy service. I'll say hello YouTube. Also, I'll add a constructor just to see the logging here. I'll add a log statement saying lazy service constructor loaded. So this is just for our reference to see when the constructor is getting loaded. And here we need to add the return. So I'll add the return. So we are done here. So we have a rest endpoint called get and we are calling the service called lazy service and we are returning that back. So now in a traditional Spring Boot application, this particular controller will be loaded and when the controller is loaded, it sees that there is a service. So the service will be now loaded as well. So as a part of the loading, this particular log will be printed. So I'll just correct this. So if I restart this particular application, we should see the log called lazy service constructor loaded. Right. So this is a, this is how a traditional Spring Boot application works. Everything is loaded during the startup time, and that is why the Spring Boot application takes a while when it comes up. So see that the log is printed here. The lazy service constructor loaded. Now there is a new option introduced by the Spring team called the Spring Lazy Initializer. In order to enable that, so let's go and add it in the YAML. So in the application dot YAML. I'm going to add it. You can add it in the application or properties as well, but I have a plugin set in my IntelliJ which will show the default configurations in the YAML file. So see that, see that when I start typing spring.main, it just shows up all the properties which are present inside the spring or inside this particular project. So that is why I started using the YAML so that I know that I'm not doing any mistake with the names and the uh, conventions. So I'm going to use this particular property called spring main lazy initialization and I'm going to say true for it. So this will enable the lazy initialization for the project. So let's see how much time the project took. The project took four milliseconds for initializing the web application context and it took almost like 8.48 seconds overall. Now if I restart this particular application, so notice that there is no log statement called the lazy service constructor loaded so which basically shows that spring boot did not load this particular class and you can see that the web application context got loaded in 3 7 double 9 millisecond and the application got loaded in like what 7 seconds which is like 1 second earlier than the previous runs right now if i hit this particular lazy endpoint the constructor should be loaded so that is what we expect right that's the lazy initialization so let's go to localhost colon 8080 slash lazy so I want to hit this particular endpoint called lazy and I expect my spring boot to load this particular constructor yep I can see that the constructor got noded now so this is the lazy, lazy initialization using which we can enable this property called uh, spring main lazy initialization and spring doesn't load all the classes it just loads the basic ones it knows what it needs to load right so it doesn't load everything and whenever you hit a rest endpoint and it loads all those relevant classes and the controllers and the services basically the beans as a part of that particular rest endpoint call now there is one more option which was provided by spring earlier before this particular spring initialization so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this as false and i'm going to restart it just to show that the spring constructor got loaded before the startup basically during the startup and I'm going to give you a alternate way to do this for a specific class. See this, the lazy service got loaded. However, there is something called lazy annotation. So there is an annotation called lazy, which we need to add during the auto wiring phase and also during the bean creation phase. So I'm going to add this annotation called at lazy to both my service and the place where I'm using. So this will make sure the class which I have annotated with lazy doesn't load. So basically the service alone doesn't get loaded during the spring initialization during the startup time. So let's restart this though. I have my lazy initialization property as false. This particular class will not be loaded. So this is another way of enabling only a particular class, which is just available uh, in the previous versions of spring boot as well. But I'm just showing you the difference between both. See that there is no log statement here and if i hit the rest endpoint called hello lazy the hello youtube one 
I should be able to see the constructor loader. See this, the lazy service constructor got loaded. So this is one more way of uh, loading a specific class. However, the difference between the Spring Lazy initialization is this is going to load the whole Spring Boot framework in the lazy initialization way. So it's going to load only the basic classes which are required by Spring Boot and all the classes which are like beans which are created by us won't be loaded during the startup time. So now there are some advantages and the disadvantages using this approach. Let's look at the advantages first. The advantage is your startup time is going to be faster. Like how we saw, we had a one second improvement in our startup time. This is a small application, like it, there's nothing in this. So we are seeing a one second uh, improvement. However, if you have a monolithic application which you have created, you will see significant improvement when you're loading entities into your JVM. So this is one of the advantage. The same way there is a relevant disadvantage because the moment you don't load anything during the startup time there are chances that you will be identifying issues during the runtime like how you get issues during the runtime in javascript you might end up no class definition found errors during the startup time if there are issues with the dependencies when you didn't tackle them properly so this is one of the disadvantage and the advantage so you should know when to use the spring initialization laziness compared to the current one which doesn't use any lazy initialization However, you can still use the at lazy annotation to annotate only the classes which you think can be loaded as a lazy initialization during the startup time. So the next one is improvement in the productivity. So if you are using Spring Dev tools and if you are um, recompiling your application, Spring Boot will load only that particular class and it is going to be much faster than it used to do using the Spring Dev tools. So if you are not sure about what are Spring Dev tools, do check out my video in the channel. So I have created a video on Spring Dev tools using IntelliJ on how to make Spring Boot faster when you are changing something on the fly. In fact, Spring claims that there is an 80% reduction in the startup time when you are using the Spring Dev tools. So if you are a developer who is using local machine for testing a lot using Spring Boot and you can definitely go ahead with Spring Dev tools. It's going to improve your process by 80%. The other disadvantage I would say is whenever you hit a HTTP endpoint, for example, in our case, when we hit the lazy endpoint, that's when we saw that the controller got triggered, the service got created. When you have heavyweight REST endpoints, which are hosted as a part of your HTTP protocol, then the first time when you hit your HTTP request, it's going to yield you more time or more processing time because Spring Boot loads the services and the controllers during that particular time. So that adds up to the processing time for a HTTP endpoint, which gets hit for the first time of that particular JVM lifecycle. So that is another con because when you are using this in production, there will be inconsistencies between the response time. So that will be a major disadvantage if you consider using it for production applications. The next one is if you have different configuration settings for your prod and UAT environment and the way you load your classes depends on these configurations, then there could be misconfigurations and you won't be able to identify issues with this misconfiguration during the startup time. Currently, if you know, Spring Boot identifies all issues during the startup time and you will get to know 90% or 99% of the runtime issues during the startup time itself. However, when you start using the lazy initialization, Spring Boot might not be able to resolve all the dependencies while injecting the classes. So you might end up getting runtime issues. The other one is when you have auto scaling groups configured in your environment and you have multiple instances of the Spring Boot application scaled up, the request on each of these instances is going to take a longer time. So as I said earlier, the HTTP request is going to take a longer time. And if you have multiple instances and you have scaled it to different microservices, then your request is going to yield more time when you're scaling up. So in order to overcome all these disadvantages, and if you want to specify a specific class in order to do lazy initialization, then you can go ahead with the at lazy annotation, which does the lazy initialization only for that particular service or the bean. So that will be more controlled than the major Spring main initialization, which is added by Spring Boot in the recent version. So this is how you can use Spring lazy initialization in order to boost the performance of your Spring Boot application. 
I hope you found this particular feature interesting. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.